Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about a really special fact involving the gradient vector. And it's the fact that the gradient vector is actually orthogonal to level curves. So let's break down what we mean that. So here we're given an f of x comma y is equal to z. Um, all right, so again, we're talking about uh, a two independent variable uh, function. Okay, and so and, and it's this context that we're discussing all of this. Um, so we have this function. So we have to define what a level curve is. So what we're going to do is uh, choose some c value. All right, so it's just going to be some number. Okay, we're going to set f of x comma y equal to c. All right. And then the goal, of course, is to find x, y points uh, such that f of x comma y is equal to c. All right, these points form a level curve. All right, so let's talk about that. So oftentimes what we call a level curve, if you were looking at a map, it would be the elevation uh, contour lines. Okay, so what we'd have here is something like this. Here's x and here's y. And if you have a specific f of x comma y is equal to c, what, uh, what you'd see here is that you'd have different, different curves for different c values. And maybe this is like a mountain, right? So here, this is maybe C is equal to 10,000 feet. Maybe this is 9,000 feet here. This is 8,000 feet and so on. As you get higher and higher up the mountain, it like that and like so. All right, so that would be a good uh, uh, example of a set of level curves for c equals 10k, 9k, 8k, 7k, and then 6k, and so on and so forth, right? So now what I want to talk about is that these level curves we want to recall that grad f at any point x, y always points in the steepest um, ascent direction. So if you're at a specific point here, let's say, it's always going to point in the steepest direction going up there, grad f. All right. That leads to a neat fact, though. It must be then that the grad f must be must be um, perpendicular, or what we call orthogonal uh, to all level curves. Well, I shouldn't say all level curves. Two, the level curve uh, at the x and y point uh, at the level, so it's at each specific level curve that you're on. So for instance, if I were here on my, on my map of my mountain, the, the gradient vector would always be 90 degrees from the level curve. So the level curve, we can think of that as formed by a tangent line, uh, and it will always be orthogonal to it. Likewise, if I pick another point, like say that point, the, grad, the gradient ve vector would go this way, yet the tangent vector to the, to the contour line will always be 90 degrees in that direction. All right. So 
this is a neat fact. And it actually ends up being very useful uh, when we want to do for optimization. It's very important for optimization, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a second, but this is really a warm-up video for that. So what I want to do now is change the slides here. Now I actually want to go through, what we're going to do in this video is I'm first going to prove this fact. Let's actually figure out how to prove it. So we're going to prove it. Uh, and then, then we're going to show an example. Okay, so let's first prove it. Okay, so let's say we're given a point uh, x, y. We're going to make a few assumptions about this. We'll assume that grad f is not zero. We don't want it to be zero. Okay, that's otherwise we're at a flat point on the thing, and of course there can be no level curve there. Um, so we also have to assume that at x comma y there is a level curve. Uh, passing through. Okay, so the question then, of course, is we have to find it. We need to find the tangent vector and we'll call that vector u uh, that, that uh, points in the tangent uh, direction of the level curve. All right, so we need to do that. All right, so again, the idea here is I might be, here is our surface, and it's formed by a bunch of level curves, and we're on a specific point, which we'll call x comma y. Right, so I need Let's say, and I know also that our vector grad f points in a specific direction, right? In fact, we can compute. Assume that grad f is known. Right, so what again is that these are, these are known, these are known values. Okay, there are specific numbers that we've, we, we've been able to compute. Okay, uh, so what we want to do, of course, is now we want to find, we want to find uh, not points, but we want to find, we want to find the level curve tangent u. All right, to find this point, of course, we have to know a fact. It must be that u points in the direction in which df u, the directional derivative, is equal to zero. So that's what we're gonna call the directional derivative. So that's the directional derivative, um, and we want to set it equal to zero. Right, so all we have to do now is find, find u, and we'll call u, we'll give it the vector a, b, right, and these numbers, of course, are unknown. We want to determine them. Find these vectors so that du of f is equal to zero. All right, so this actually should be fairly straightforward. We also have one more fact, of course. That we need to say that, of course, we know we require that u in magnitude is equal to one. This requirement isn't that important. We, didn't, we don't really need to have it, but it's important. Um, the reason why is because, of course, 
the, the, the derivative is zero. Uh, but we'll, we'll keep going with that just because that's the rule of how we always define our directional derivatives. All right, so let's compute it. We know also we have a specific formula for du, the directional derivative. We know it's actually going to be the gradient vector dotted with u. Well, that means we have fx, fy. Of course, this is known. And we're dotting it with a and b. And then we're setting it equal to 0. And this, of course, is unknown. OK. Well, that means that equals fx times a plus fy times b. And that's equal to 0. So now we solve. And we find that, well, I think we can actually get a pretty good picture of what it has to be. A can be equal to fx, or no, I'm sorry, it should be equal to fy. And b can be equal to f negative fx. Okay. Or there's another solution, of course, which is a is equal to negative fy and b is equal to positive fx. So either one works. It doesn't matter which one they are. Right, so that means we can write u is equal to uh, fy, and then b is equal to negative fx. These are the only values that if you plug them in there, that will equal 0. I really shouldn't say only values, though, because actually or any scalar multiple. Would also work. So in fact, we need to now normalize by the gradient vector magnitude there. So u has magnitude 1. OK. All right, we can also note, though, that that the, so we're going to call this u1, and then u2 will be equal to its negative, which is going to be equal to negative fy comma fx, also scaled by the gradient vector value. All right. So by definition, u dotted with grad f is equal to zero defines orthogonality. And of course, we have two directions, u1 and u2, which of course are opposite directions. So what we have here, again, if I draw my, my, my contour lines like this, if we have a spot here, x comma y, and the gradient vector goes grad f, we know that the contour line tangents have to be 90 degrees, and we have one going in one direction and another going in the opposite direction. And that forms the direction of the level curve that goes around our, our surface, always keeping at the same level. So here, this is du f is equal to 0. This, of course, is the greatest ascent uh, direction. OK, so that proves it. That is a proof, OK? And so now we can always find it. So you, your vector, one way of saying is given, let's look at this a little bit more carefully. And that is, if I'm given uh, uh, grad f is equal to fx comma fy, all right, then u has to be either, has to be, you, you swap the, the two fx and fy and make one of them negative. And of course, then you can just scale by the magnitude of the vector underneath. Or take the negative of that. 
So that's actually a good trick to always being able to find perpendicular vectors. If you have a vector a uh, of two numbers, just swap the numbers and make one of them negative, and you'll always have the orthogonal or the perpendicular vector to go with it. But now, of course, we've now proven uh, this really neat fact about level curves. So it should be that every level curve Uh, every level curve is orthogonal to grad f. Every, every level curve uh, tangent, I should say, is orthogonal to grad f at every, every point uh, grad f is defined. And the level curve is defined. Okay, so with, by putting all that together, we have that. So now let's uh, go and, and just do a simple example. So we're going to give an f of x comma y is equal to minus one, or 1 minus x squared minus y squared. This is a paraboloid. Okay, a paraboloid. And it's going to look like this. It's sort of that gumdrop shape like that. And the level curves, of course, are concentric circles. Are concentric circles. Okay. Um... So what I want to do is we're going to examine a point this. We're going to look at the point. We're going to look at the point square root of 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. Okay. So that point's going to be right there on the xy plane. And let's see if we can compute grad f. So grad f is going to be a negative 2x, negative 2y. Right? So when I actually evaluate at our point, we're going to get negative root 2. Uh, sorry, that should be negative 2y. I'm sorry about that. Negative root 2. All right, so we can put that on our graph, and it's going to be pointed straight into the origin like that, right? And of course, that is the direction of greatest, uh, of greatest ascent. All right, likewise, now we can find u. We'll call it u1. That'll be equal to... So we swap the two, the two around. In this case, they're the same value, but then we make one of them not negative. And u, u2 is going to be the opposite. Okay. And these and these le and these in these vectors, I can put right there, like that, All right? Remember, we always have to, uh, um, we always there are going to be diagonal lines uh, that go uh, in orthogonal directions. And we're, we're although they're these also emanate at the origin, but we're translating them up to our point root two over two root two over two in order for for visualization purposes. Okay, so. With this particular curve, if I if I follow in that direction, of course, I'll get to the top of the mountain, the top of that gumdrop shape there, uh, just fine. But I hope this gives you just an example of how uh, these vectors work. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to close this video out. We now have a really important fact about the gradient of vector and level curves that we will we'll use in future videos about optimization. Thank you very much.